So tell us a little bit about yourself and what led up to you wanting to become an instructor. I started my martial arts training uh, when I was eight. Uh, I was a huge, you know, Bruce Lee fan, huge martial arts fan uh, in general. Um, uh, a fanatical uh, devotee of uh, black belt theater, so to speak. Um, and also, as a young kid, uh, I had asthma uh, that was allergy activated. Um, so my father thought it would be a good idea for me to do some martial arts training. He, being a martial artist himself, you know, he had some judo training, he had some training in Aikido, uh, which was a big part of him, you know, putting me into an Aikido school. Uh, and within a couple of years of me training in Aikido, you know, the asthma was not an issue for me anymore. Um, and have continued to study martial arts uh, ever since then. Uh, it's been a significant impact on my life, um, mentally, spiritually, physically. I uh, have met great people, have had great experiences. And uh, my motivation uh, for deciding to be an, an instructor is that I want people to have an opportunity to get the same benefit uh, for martial arts training that I got. And that, that was the impetus for me behind making a decision to become an instructor. Okay. Um, from what I understand, you've done some uh, rebranding lately. So, um, what is behind Warrior Wisdom Martial Arts? Uh, the concept behind Warrior Wisdom Martial Arts, um, you kind of have to break it down into kind of two parts. First is the warrior part. Uh, for, for me, Someone who is a warrior is someone who has mastered themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, someone who has consistently demonstrated certain qualities that are indicative of self-mastery. Uh, as far as their, their health, uh, they have a certain level of uh, energy and vitality. Uh, they demonstrate a certain degree of personal effectiveness. You know, if they have goals in their lives, they're you're pretty able to get those goals mm -hmm. accomplished. Uh, the quality of the relationships in their lives are, are positive. Uh, people that are included in their circle uh, consider that relationship valuable. Uh, there is a type of knowledge that one can only get through experience. Uh, that knowledge I would describe as wisdom. So. My objective as an instructor is to create an, op an opportunity uh, for you to have the experience of self-mastery and gain wisdom from that experience. Okay. So you gain wisdom in the process of becoming a warrior, in the process of gaining that self-mastery, you gain wisdom. So that's the concept behind warrior wisdom martial arts. Okay. Now, what makes it so unique uh, uh, of, um, in your method of training, or uh, of instruction? Uh, what makes it unique, uh, at this point I've made a decision to focus primarily on private instruction uh, and limiting the number of students that I have uh, to really a handful, maybe 20 or so students tops, mm -hmm. um, for a couple of reasons. One. Uh, I want to be able to cater specifically to the needs of my students on an individual basis because everyone has a different learning style, a different way of approaching uh, how they understand and perceive things. Uh, and I want to be able to, you know, modify my instruction so that uh, the student can most efficiently you know, achieve the goals that they want to achieve as far as their martial arts instruction. And in addition to that, with a small number of students and focusing on private instruction, I can maintain a certain level of quality uh, as far as the instruction that the student is receiving. Okay. Uh, so I think that uh, distinguishes us from the majority of martial arts schools. Uh, and, and not with any judgment, it's just it's, it's a different experience from going to a school uh, and putting on a uniform and parroting the instructor for an hour 
or getting some sort of cardio workout, which is great if that's what you're looking for. But you know, this is a little bit different. Um, honestly, it requires a bit more of both me and the student, uh, okay. quite honestly. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what distinguishes us. So now what systems do you currently uh, teach now? Our primary curriculum is Wing Chun. Okay. Uh, we also teach uh, edged weapons, uh, swords, knives, forming mm -hmm. knives, six blade knives, uh, staves, uh, batons, uh, any sort of impact weapon. Uh, most of that knowledge is drawn from our uh, Pacific Archipelago Combatives curriculum, which draws influence from our niece, uh, Kali, uh, Sila, uh, of a very pragmatic blend. Um, we also teach modern unarmed combatives, which yeah, doesn't really adhere to any particular martial arts tradition, but really takes the approach of kind of reverse engineering uh, any sort of situation that you might find yourself in uh, from a self-defense perspective. Uh, you know, somebody pulls a knife on you, somebody pulls a gun on you within arm's reach. Uh, any sort of, you know, modern self-defense scenario, we're going to look at what are the best, you know, techniques and tactics that you can train that would give you a, a good chance of uh, diffusing or neutralizing those situations. Uh, we also teach some elements from Aikido. Uh, which is joint locks, uh, controls, escapes, throws. Um, this is good for people who are either professional security, uh, professional law enforcement, where you need to be able to neutralize the situation without necessarily causing any sort of permanent uh, physical injury. Okay. Um, and these are the primary systems that we teach. Okay. So, um, you know, when you search for students or students uh, look for a teacher, what do you look for? What is, what is the potential that you look for in a student? Because of uh, the kind of unique <clears throat> excuse me, style uh, of instruction that we're offering, really the student has to take a lot of the initiative upon himself. Uh, for example, the students that I have now, most of them I see them you know, maybe once, maybe twice a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's hands-on personal instruction. Uh, but the success of the instruction really depends on the amount of study that the student is doing independently. Because mm -hmm. I, I basically, you know, give you homework. I give you things to think about. I give you things to think about in a way that if you are able to internalize it and digest it, will change your nature. Okay. And then what happens is we build upon that. Uh, a lot of the skill, especially with the Wing Chun, depends on you having first-hand experience of certain types of energy, a certain types of structure, a certain types of movement that we cannot really convey to you just intellectually. Yeah. Um, so you come here, we spend some time together. You know, I convey certain things to you. You know, face to face, heart to heart, mind to mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you spend some time with that material, and then when you come back, we build on that some more, and that process continues pretty much indefinitely. And, and that's pretty much the way it works. But uh, if the student, for whatever reason, is not willing to do the work you know, for themselves, then it really limits how much I can teach them. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, if you want to learn mathematics, you know, if you wanted me to teach you calculus, uh, it'd be kind of difficult for me to do that if you hadn't already put in the work learning your algebra, you know, your trig, your geometry, even basic arithmetic. You know, we can't have a discussion about calculus if you haven't already done that work. Mm -hmm. So it kind of works like that. Right, right. So, you know, with all the different martial arts and everything that's going on, where do you think martial arts is as far as what, the, what your outlook on it in the 21st century? I think the value of martial arts training in the 21st century is that it will help you to explore, realize, and express your potential as a human being. Um, if you look at martial arts traditions from, you know, regardless of what part of the world you look at, you know, 
these different forms of armed and unarmed combat were pretty much, you know, family secrets. Mm -hmm. Um, like the equivalent of like you know military technology, you would not just give it out to anybody. It's a significant vulnerability if anybody found out what your military secrets were. Mm -hmm. But in a time when you know you can take a drive down the street and buy a thirty-eight, <laughs> it, it it doesn't quite have the same level of seriousness that it once had. Right. So now the value of martial arts training. I mean, yeah, there's there's a value as far as being able to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And you want to you find a teacher, find an instructor, find a system that is going to help you within that realm, because that, that is important, but that is not of preeminent importance. Really, in my opinion, what is most important is something that is going to help you achieve mental and physical integration. Mm -hmm. uh, really, I think that's, that's key. You know, realizing your potential and increasing your level of mental and physical integration. That, I think, is the most valuable aspect of martial arts training in the 21st century. Okay. Now, as an instructor, you know, at your level with so much um, background and history, you know, that you have, do you feel as though that you should continue to, to learn? Oh, well, absolutely. I, th I think that's very important uh, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, there isn't any one system, you know, that has all the answers to any particular, you know, situation that you might find yourself in. Um, as an instructor, you want to look for, you know, what is the, the most holistic and congruent approach from a variety of systems that's going to help you fill in the gaps, you know, for whatever the situation might be. Uh, as a student, you know, and even instructors should consider themselves students, but you want to look at it in terms of kind of like the way you would pick a college major, you know, a major and a minor. Mm -hmm. you know, figure out who you are as an individual, your mentality, your physicality, your capability, uh, your personality type. Take those things in consideration and then think, okay, of the hundreds if not thousands of systems out there, what is the system that is most congruent to who I am just as a person? Mm -hmm. Then, you know, spend a significant amount of time making that system your foundation. And then once you've done that, honestly, I think it's an excellent idea to explore other systems. Um, it will give you a different perspective on things that you've already learned and also possibly enhance and broaden uh, your skill set, which is, is always going to be a plus. You know? And if you consider yourself you know, a professional instructor, I think it's uh, of utmost importance to continue learning in order to keep your knowledge relevant. You know, things change. Uh, people don't fight the same way now that they fought you know, even 50 years ago. No, not at all. Yeah, so that, that's, that's very important. All right, so, you know, it, it, with you rebranding re is, is and, and offering so much, I mean, do you think you cover a lot of the bases of what somebody could have a base on and also what they, you know, you offer more than just one style. So, you know, do you think you cover most of the bases of what somebody could integrate into their other martial arts? Well. Honestly, it really depends a lot on, on the student and what their goal is. Uh, they can decide they want to study one particular discipline formally and just stick to that. Um, or they might want to decide, you know, I, I have this background, but I have these weaknesses. You know, I don't have any weapons training. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, I, I don't have any close quarters combat training or any sensitivity training. You know, can you you know, create a curriculum for me that will help me to en enhance those skills. You know, that's, that's something that's easily doable. So a lot of it depends on what the goals of the student are. Uh, and then we try and see if we can, you know, create a path that is going to help the student get to where they want to go. Okay. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. Uh, well, if, if you don't have anything else, uh, you know, I mean, it's been great talking to you. I see you have a lot that you offer <laughs> and uh, you know 
I hopefully uh, wish you success. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to share. I appreciate the opportunity to do this interview. All right. Thank you. Bye.